the things we're going to talk about today is a, a new material that has the potential to revolutionise the future of not just Formula One, but everything. Okay, so uh, tell us a little bit more. I, I guess this is what you've got in your hand. Yes. It looks pretty nondescript to me. I've brought some along with me. It's called graphene. It's an incredible material that was discovered about 10 years ago now at the University of Manchester in England. And this stuff boasts a set of superlatives that no other material can even come close to when we're talking about describing it. It's the thinnest material in the world. It's the lightest, the strongest, the most impermeable, so even the tiny helium atoms can't pass through it. And it's conducted of, of both heat and electricity to incredible levels. So really it has the potential to revolutionise almost everything we do. It's something that Formula One engineers will be getting very excited about soon. So that's a piece of it in there, is it? This is a piece of graphene paper that's made up of millions of tiny graphene flakes. Um, now graphene itself is so thin, it's a single layer of carbon atoms thick, something that's in itself quite difficult to get your head around. I mean, it's so thin that it would take something like three million sheets of graphene stacked on top of each other to make, to make about the same thickness as a human hair. Oh, that's so hard to get your head around. In fact, so much so, let's uh, put it in terms of F1. What can we see it used for? We could really revolutionise almost everything we do because a Formula One car, in terms of manufacturing, is made largely from carbon fibre at the moment. That was the last material to come into our sport and, and generally revolutionise it. But this has the potential to blow that out of the water. You know, it really is a, a whole new level. So if we can start making components out of this, we can make them smaller still, lighter, yet keeping those strength capabilities. So retaining the safety of a, of a Formula One chassis, for example, but making it faster, importantly. So we could certainly build the body of the car from it. What about the internal components? Well, yes, almost everything really could be, could be changed if this stuff reaches its potential. But one of the other big key areas would be the electronic side of Formula One. It's a big part of these cars. They're very sophisticated. And, and at the moment, engineers and designers are restricted with their electrical components by their size and their weight. This stuff conducts heat in such an efficient manner they could be making these components tiny. We could be talking about printed circuit boards in you know, a flat that take up no space, no weight. Cabling, them, there's kilometres worth of cabling around this car that's currently heavy. If that can be made out of graphene, we could be talking about an even a very different shaped Formula One car in the future if this stuff really comes to its potential. All right, well that was four, four years ago, nearly five years ago now. I know we probably looked a little bit younger. My hair was definitely a lot different. Um, but since then, things have changed an awful lot. And joining me now is a guy called Shannon Notley, who started a company called Flexigraph, working in that graphene space. But not how I probably imagined the graphene space was going to go. Shannon can tell us a bit more, but he's moved into a very different area. Now, you think I'm a geek. You think I'm a tech science geek. This guy is next level. <laughs> Inside this <laughs> modestly shaped head is a massive brain. <laughs> Shannon, welcome along, mate. Um, Shannon's the founder of Flexigraph. Just tell us a little bit about, first of all, where we thought uh, graphene was going to go, because we were all thinking it was going to go down the route of, of kind of composites and changing that space. And there's lots of work going on in that. But why did you decide to move in a very different area, and what is that area? Well, first of all, thanks for that very kind introduction. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, always great to be able to catch up with you, with, you um, with the market. So, look, the composite space with graphene is still very interesting. A lot of people are trying to crack it, and there's many fantastic opportunities there. But, you know, there are some challenges too. And yeah. uh, when we started the company a few years back, we were also looking at the potential opportunities in composites. But we tried to strip everything back and look at what were the nearest opportunities for us based upon the process for producing graphene and that's where we really start to focus around the fluid type applications. So what you have done then is taken the amazing properties that graphene has and somehow managed to put that into a fluid and, and so what's that fluid used for first of all? Yeah, to, to give you a little, little bit of background I guess that uh, graphene has the highest known thermal conductivity of any material and by putting it into another type of material you enhance that. So. Uh, also, to give you a bit of background, it has about 10,000 times the thermal conductivity of, of a base fluid like water. So, by putting a little bit of graphene into these liquids, you can enhance the thermal properties quite substantially. Um, and that, open, that opens up a big range of opportunities for advanced cooling applications. Okay. So, if you think of uh, traditional water glycol based systems like you'd find in a, an engine of a car, 
Uh, they were first developed back in around about 1926. Okay. And there hasn't been a massive improvement in the thermal performance of those fluids since. So it's almost 90 or 100 years since yeah. there's been that uh, advancement. So we see many fantastic opportunities in automotive applications from cooling engines, cooling motors, other parts in uh, electric vehicles, but also other areas such as high performance computing, uh, geothermal heating and, and a few others. Anywhere where there's liquid cooling we can make a difference. Anything that needs heat transfer, heat taking away from somewhere like an engine, you know, anything like that, I guess this can be a massive benefit for because it does it more efficiently. Exactly, yeah. So it works about a 60% more efficiently than the traditional fluids which are being used and um, many systems are basically designed or have been con conceptualized based upon this limitation of the fluid. Um, and yeah. it was felt that there was no realistic way of improving that. So they would make changes in cooling systems elsewhere. But what we've been able to do is to refocus the, the whole industry, I guess, on understanding how we can incorporate these new liquids into their systems and what that means for not just their performance, but also the design process down the track. Okay. Well, when I first heard about this, and Shannon and I met, I think it was about four years ago now, as I say, when I first heard of what he was doing, I was so impressed because of the geek in me about the technology, the innovation that this really highlights, that um, for full disclosure, I've become a shareholder in Shannon's company. So, so I am now very much involved in this. And one of the areas that I saw a massive opportunity with this was pushing it into the motorsport world. There are two simultaneous races going on in Formula E. There's the obvious one with the cars out on the track. But there's also a constant battle going on against temperature. Why is temperature so critical and how can combating it benefit not just the cars out on the track, but you and I out in the wider world too? Um, you know, Formula One, Formula E, these are areas where we're always trying to push the technology as hard as we can. And when you do that, you build up massive heat. That becomes your limitation, is the heat build up. Uh, within engines, within powertrains, within batteries. And so that's why I got involved, that's how we started talking. We're now at a point now where this is now a, a very much further developed product in terms of the cooling fluid. And we're now talking to a lot of the big Formula One teams, manufacturers, Formula E teams, about how they can use this to you know, reduce that cooling uh, demand within, a, within their, their components, but also then maximise performance. So the possibilities are quite significant here, aren't they? Well, absolutely, and that's why as we're developing our strategy to go to market, we're targeting those areas which have the greatest potential impact, and it's really in that highest performance area uh, that we see the biggest opportunities, and that's why being uh, not only just within motorsport, but the pinnacle of motorsport in F1, uh, Formula E and these sorts of areas is really important to us because if we can prove our technology in those sorts of areas, it sort of de-risks everything for the larger scale yeah. automotive manufacturers down the track. So uh, we're very excited to be able to um, make those connections into that space and yeah, yeah very happy to have uh, you as part of, the, um, part of the team. Well, I love a bit of technology, as you lot know, and, and I think one of the other things is that we've got this massively emerging market of electric vehicles, and, and one of the big limitations with that, again, is heat, because we all want electric vehicles to be charged up like that, don't we? We want them to be rapidly charged, we want them to deliver massive amounts of power very quickly as well. When you do that, you generate massive amounts of heat. So from this huge growing marketplace of electric vehicles, if we can start to, to help in that side, on the auto automotive side, as well as Formula E, of course, you can really start to, as a consumer, as a consumer of electric vehicles, you can start to really benefit from that. I, I, absolutely, and I think uh, when you're looking at an electric vehicle, you can think of it much like a giant um, toaster. You know, <laughs> you're, you're passing current through a system and there, there's losses in that system which result in heat and heat which needs to be dissipated. And the faster you do stuff, the yeah. more heat you generate. And, or the fast, or the bigger your battery, the more heat you generate as well. So obviously charging, getting cars back on the road quicker, getting trucks and buses back on the road so they're not sitting around uh, just charging all day is really important. But if you also think about ultra-fast acceleration, this is where you're yeah. actually discharging your batteries extraordinarily fast. Yeah. It puts huge heat loads on areas like you know, inverters, for instance. So we see great opportunities there. But there's also opportunities when, in very cold uh, weather conditions, where batteries tend not to work so well. Our solution also helps uh, rapidly heat the battery to, to make sure it works in the optimum range. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, really fascinating stuff, as I say. Uh, let's just quickly fast forward, say, I don't know, 20 years. Because when graphene was first kind of discovered, it was 2003, wasn't it, in Manchester, University of Manchester. People got very excited, there was a lot of hype around it, I got very excited. 
Um, but it was all kind of talking about how we could you know, revolutionise cars, we could revolutionise everything. Mobile phones would be tiny, flexible things that you'd fold up and pop in your pocket. Those things haven't yet materialised, have they? But where do you see 20 years from now? What are the possibilities that graphene as a material can, can impact on the wider world? I think if you look across not just sort of the industry verticals or the life in general, I mean, there's a lot of fantastic work going on along in um, purification of water. Yeah. Um, also, actually improving battery technology, allowing um, a greater capacity batteries, for instance, I think is really interesting too. Because that impacts everything, doesn't it? It, it does. It, when you talk energy and water, yeah. um, they're intimately, uh, I guess, connected. Yeah. If you can solve the energy problem, then you can desalinate everything. If you can provide uh, cheap, clean drinking water, then that enables a huge amount of population um, to, to access those sorts of things. I think that's where that graphene-based technologies can make a huge impact. There's a lot of work going into sort of biomedical applications, nanomedicine as well. Yeah. So really, there's still an extraordinary amount of opportunities and work to, to do, and probably the hype is a little ahead of where the um, current state of play is. But I think to some extent it's justified because it's really a new material. People are still trying to understand the limitations and its potential uses. Great. Well, it's fascinating. I'm gonna, I've got some. I've got some of the fluid at home, which I will be dropping into my road car and we'll just see what it does. I hope it's going to be a, a kind of non-scientific but fun test to show just exactly what it will do, lowering the temperature of the engine in my road car, I hope. Um, I hope it works. <laughs> uh, look, I'm confident it will, and that's, that's why we keep on pushing ahead. And, you know, that's where it all... It, it, it's a staged approach, right? So we want to get into those large-scale markets like yeah. our production automotive. It just takes time to pass the certifications, regulations and everything. Which right. is why we've gone on motorsport, because things happen very, very quickly in the motorsport world. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the motorsport the ability to, to innovate and execute on yeah. you know, weeks rather than years is uh, really attractive to us. So we're, we're very excited to be working in both spaces. We understand still a lot of work to do there. Watch this space. I must just say, Shannon is based in Australia. That's where the company was founded. Over here on a very, very short business trip. So in between meetings, I've managed to grab him, which is why we are sat in a pub car park <laughs> somewhere in Oxfordshire. So excuse the backdrop, excuse the noise around us, but I hope you found that interesting. There will be more on this channel talking about this kind of subject. Uh, and I say, full disclosure, I guess it's kind of an ad because I'm involved with the company as a very noisy child skates past on a scooter. <laughs> but for now, guys, we'll see you later. It looked, it looked like an electric scooter, so it's all right. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Right, thank you. <laughs>